بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا Before touching on what was written on the poster, the lies in Western education. So this is a very hard topic. There are certain topics which are really spicy. If you tell a person we'll speak about a second wife today, you'll see the whole masjid will come. More women will come than men. And if you speak about not to take a second wife, after that you will become the sheikh of all the women of the country. That is the top topic. You speak about Western education... Because Western education is like a god for us. That without my education, I won't get my rosy, my sustenance. So before we come to the topic, because many a person, when they hear this, they get put off immediately. That a person is attacking the very thing which is the source of my sustenance. So we all went through the system. I went through Western education. You went through Western education. No one is saying you can't go through it. No one is saying now schools must close down. Universities must close. What we're going to speak about in this bayan is that there are lies in the system. And as long as we don't believe that there can be lies in the system, and the amount of azmat and honor that we show to it, it never happened to us. Alhamdulillah, today we are sitting in this masjid. But the shaitani bite is not a bite that hits the first group, it hits the next group. Today, many of our children are being put in the same system we went through. But when we were in university, when we were in school, if I had a girlfriend, the most that happened is one day on a valentine, I gave her one small peck on her cheek, one kiss. She went red, I went red. He said, don't tell anyone about it. Because it happened in our era like that, many parents today think that school is still the same. But in school today, no one is giving pecks anymore. But when that young child is telling, Daddy, I need to get married, then the father thinks how he was in school and how school was in his era. It remained the same. It doesn't remain the same. It's changing so fast, so fast, that if you try to look after your children according to the standard you found your father looking after you, you will find your entire family will collapse. Ask a Ustad who's teaching Hivs in the madrasa. He says, 20, 30 years ago I taught with the stick. Ask him today if it's working, you can't teach anymore with the stick. It's either close the madrasa and give up or you'll have to learn to adapt. If you're not ready to accept that things change very fast, you will never be a good father for your child. How your father grew you up, you can't grow your child up. Your father would say, I'll break your bones. You can't say that anymore. Things have changed. If that child is now rude to you, Allah's Nabi said, you will find the time. When you will find the time where the child will be the monster in the house. Fifty years ago, we never thought of that. Fifty years ago, the child was scared of the father, he was scared of the teacher. He would come to madrasa, the ustad would give him hiding. But he was so scared, if my father has to find out, I'll get double hiding. In today's time, the father and the ustad both are scared of the child. The father tells the teacher, don't tell him I came here. The teacher is telling the father, you sort out your child, I'm not going to sort him out. Allah's Nabi said, when the child becomes a monster, now how do you deal with the monster? You'll have to learn to adapt. Once upon a time, your child was like a cat. You just hit him and he ran. Today the child is like the lion. Ask a man who looks after a lion. You can't hit the lion. The lion jumps back on your face. Things have changed. Children today know more than the father, know more than the mother. There was a time in the past where maths was so important. Today maths is not important. That teacher is trying to work out on hard sum. That child got a phone in his hand. As the teacher is halfway, he already got the answer. Things change. What was so important yesterday no longer is so important. If we're not ready to adapt and understand, one of the bites of shaitan in today's time 
was a bite that missed all of us. It is called, you have so much trust in the system that you never believe the system can lie. Finally, when that teacher tells the child that do you really believe this is the book of Allah? And the child says, yes. And the teacher says, but you don't know what's in it, isn't it? And then the teacher starts saying, oh my child, do you believe in a sky? That child grew up not believing in a sky. The teacher says, in this book of yours, there's mention of a created sky. There's mention of the jinn going to the sky. There's mention of, look at the sky, can you see any cracks in the sky? When that child says, no, it can't be in the Quran. Then the teacher says, let me show you. The child believed so much, so much, so much that everything my teacher says is the truth. That is where the problem is today. There is nothing that can stop our children going into the system. But to save their iman, from day one you have to tell him there's a lot of lies in the system. Everything the teacher says is not the truth. But before we came to that, I wanted to make tarjuma of the surah. The surah is known as Abbas. In the surah, Almighty Allah was going to exhibit, was going to show that Almighty Allah doesn't need me and He doesn't need you. That this Islam is a very independent religion. And anyone who shows an attitude, Almighty Allah got an attitude higher than His attitude. Understand this verse, Abbasa. Abbasa means a frown appeared. What happened is Allah's Nabi Sallallahu was giving unique dawat. And there was a group of the very influential people of Makkah Mukarrama. And there was such an hope that if they listen to this message and they accept it, then so many others of Makkah Mukarrama will accept. While giving this dawat, this group of the Quraysh, they had one A about them. That we are so rich, we don't sit with the poor. And when we got a gathering, we got a special gathering. Nobody else must come in that gathering. There was a sahabi radiallahu who was blind. He was one of the wealthy people. Because of his being blind, one question came to his mind. In that state of blindness, a blind man knows his way. In that state he came and he asked, where is the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So they told him there. So he comes to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a question. But because he's blind, he can't understand what was the situation at that moment. That this is not the time to come in and ask your question because you're spoiling a big conference that's taking place. So he came and he asked. And because he asked, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw on those leaders of the Quraysh, they were upset. That this poor man is intruding. So a certain frown came on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's face, which is a natural frown. It's like sometimes you're talking with a friend and your child comes in. You don't not like your child, it's just like, can you move? Allah ta'ala revealed this verse, look at this verse. This verse was going to teach me and you, don't take Islam for granted. Abasa wa tawalla, a frown appeared on the face. He turned. When Allah Tabarukullah spoke to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he spoke to him, Allah took qasam on the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Tabarukullah would speak to him, never use the name Muhammad. The world was told, don't say Muhammad, say Ya Rasul Allah, O Messenger of Allah. Adab Allah taught the world of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in this verse, Almighty Allah was going to show a certain level of displeasure. So instead of saying that you frowned, Allah Tawarukullah said, Abasa, he frowned. Watawalla, he turned. Anja'ahul A'ma. Just because a blind man came to him, that him, him, was an indication, I'm not even talking to you at the moment. I'm talking about a him, a frown. He turned. Just because a blind man came to him, وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّى and now that Kerr came, then how do you know? Perhaps he would have listened to your message. Oh, يَذَّكَّرُ فَتَنْفَعَهُ الذِّكْرَى It would have benefited him. أَمَّا مَنْ إِسْتَغْنَى Here you will understand what Islam is. Allah Tabarakullah said, we know what was happening. 
We know who was in front of you. We know those big bosses. You had so much of hope that they will accept Islam. Allah Taala said, "Amma man istaghna." As for that person who's acting independent, فَأَنْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّى You worried about him. You breaking your time with him. You bothered about him. وَمَا عَلَيْكَ إِلَّا يَزَّكَّى It will not harm you one, but if he doesn't want to change his life. That was the Sahaba Sawatawalla. There was so much in it, that if that man don't want to listen, then say, Almighty Allah is saying, don't bother. There's another blind man, he's interested. أَمَّا مَنْ جَاءَكَ يَسْعَى As for the one who came running to you, you might feel that there's nothing valuable about him, he's blind. How is he going to benefit much? وَهُوَ يَخْشَى He got fear of Allah. فَأَنْتَ عَنْهُ تَلَحَى Have you shown an attitude towards him like, later on I'll see you at the moment I'm busy. Kalla Allah Taala said, no need for this. إِنَّهَا تَذْكِرَى This is a message. فَمَنْ شَاءَ ذَكَرَى Who wants to take this message, let him take it. فِي صُحُفٍ مُكَرَّمَى It is in a beautiful book. مَرْفُوعَةٍ مُطَحَّرَى It is high, it is pure. بِأَيْدِي سَفَرَى It is in the hand of the most noble of scribes. قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَى And then Allah Taala says, As for the one who doesn't want to listen, let him be destroyed. قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ This is Quran. A group of people came to Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were from a unique tribe. When they enter, normally when a big group enters, then you expect like the other person will stand up and say, I waited so long for you. So they came and they said, Oh Allah's Nabi, we accepted Iman. We brought Iman. Verse of Quran came, يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا They came and they are boasting about the Islam. قُلْ لَا تَمُنُّوا عَلَيَّ إِسْلَامَكُمْ Almighty Allah said, say to them, there's no need to boast about your Islam. بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah favored you, He gave you that Islam. Nothing big about you. A king came, he accepted Islam. It was the beginning periods of Islam, for a king to accept was a big thing. It was in the era of Umar radiallahu an. That king now went for the tawaf, he was making tawaf, either it was hajj time or it was a umrah, he went, he just accepted Islam, it was a big talk. While he was making tawaf, how tawaf happens, that time the crowds were smaller, but it was a big crowd. Someone's leg went on his lower garment, on the ihram. Because that man's leg went on it, as he moved, that ihram pulled a little. Maybe it fell a little, maybe he grabbed it, whatever it was, he was a king. Immediately he turned around, he said, how dare you pull off my garments. But that man was like an innocent man, and he smacked him in the nose. And he really injured it. So that thing started bleeding, the man fell to the ground. He brought a case to the Khalifa of the time, Umar radiallahu anh. The normal law was a nose for a nose. You smashed his nose, he'll have to smash your nose. This is a king, that's a normal guy, I'll just pay him 20 rand, 30 rand, get lost. He heard he's being summoned by the Khalifa. He couldn't accept it, how dare you summon me. Day and day he disappeared from Makkah Mukarrama. He had just accepted Islam. His Islam was a big thing. And how quickly he came in, so quickly he went out also. Immediately he ran away to another nearby land. The land of where Christians were still and he started moving away further because he knew now, after entering in Islam and you leave Islam, now now it's finished. The historians write, that Umar radiallahu anh heard about it. He heard where he ran away. Normally what we would have done, we would have written a letter to him that say, you know what, we can sort out the matter. Such a big king. He said Umar radiallahu anh did not even write a letter to him. Did not even ask regarding him. Just left it. What was it they understood that Almighty Allah never begged anyone for Iman and Islam. Why I'm saying this here is many a time, we are finding amongst our friends that it's the rich people who sometimes are saying certain things with their tongue as though they are in charge of Islam. And we are then seeing that error coming where in their houses the punishment of Allah is falling. And that's when they are begging and crying. 
That is why we're saying this, don't ever take a chance with Allah. Just because of wealth, never let us say certain things which can bring upon us divine punishment. Islam doesn't need me, Islam doesn't need you. It is the gift of Allah, He gave it to us. I have to hold this gift like this, and I have to walk with it till the ending. Now when I got this gift, there's a world out there, it is called a shaitani, a satanic. You can call it illuminati, you can call it freemasonry. You can call it what you want to, but they're going out of their way to pull out my iman and to pull out your iman, but more to pull out iman of innocent children. And they always had unique ways. But one of the best was this, that if you speak the truth 99 times, no one will ever believe the hundred could be a lie. If you speak the truth 99 times, you see your garment, that garment, whether it's an auntie talking or an uncle talking, no one in the world ever listens to a mashwara of a woman. But when that woman came on the garment, she's been right so many times. Whenever I got lost, it was the garment that showed me the road. As it started speaking, never ever in the past, if another woman gave you mashwara, your wife would tell you, listen to her. Never it happened. But when that auntie came on garment, Every time you got lost, she was right. A time came that you also started and your wife also started. That when garment has never lied, it means it can never lie. But there is always a chance that sometimes that map is not updated. And you land up in one area and your garment is confused. You'll see it sometimes. That garment will say, take a U-turn, take a U-turn, take a U-turn. There's no road here, but there is a road. Just because garment spoke 99 times the truth doesn't mean it can't speak a lie. That man who's driving the car is told, use your brains. That if there's a road here, there's a road, whether garment is saying there's a road or not. Similarly, in the world we live in, you are entering a university system, a schooling system, in the past, the shaitani lie only came in university. Today, it's coming in grade one. In grade one, a child is being taught a system called evolution. In grade one, he's being shown a monkey becoming a baboon, becoming a man. In grade one. In grade one, he's being told that it's natural. It's natural that you can like a boy, you can like a girl. It is natural. It's natural you can like a chicken also. But it doesn't mean whatever you like, you must go towards it. Certain likes you can't do. Some fathers in the time we are living gets a desire for his own daughter. He can also say it's natural. We'll tell him whether it's natural or not natural is not the issue. Certain things Allah said yes, certain things Allah said no. Finished. No matter how much you want it in this world, you can't get it all. It's a natural thing after you get married. You fall more interested in your sister-in-law than your wife. Natural it is. It's a habit of man when you go to a shop, restaurant, whatever you order after it comes, you'll feel, hey, I wish I ordered what that guy ordered. It's natural. But every time you get that feeling, you can't grab his burger. When you got married after five weeks, six weeks, your wife became normal. In Arabic they say, man is desirous. Al-insanu haris fima munia. Man only wants what he can't get. Once he gets it, he wants something else. That person who says, I got the shock. I just like to get a girl, but I don't like to keep the girl. So what's our answer to him? We say, what your shock is, is your shock. You'll have to learn to curb it. Because in this world, you can't do whatever you want. That child in class one is being taught, no, if you want, you can do. Today in South Africa, it has become, other countries are gone much worse. Allah save our country. I just came back a while ago from England. At that time, so many ulama were worried that that young child is being taught to read a book where a man and a man are husband and like, I don't know what you call it, husband and husband. How do they call it husband and wife? They call it the family. And so faulty they made it, they had to put two Muslim people in it. To show it's natural for a Muslim. So that young boy is telling me about it. So maybe it was Zaid and Ahmed. 
That's like, I don't know, you call it mommy, mommy, daddy, 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 mommy, whatever you call it. So Zaid and Ahmad and two children. So the story is Zaid and Ahmad and their two children went for a picnic. That's the thing. They don't speak about them. They speak about the picnic. They went for a picnic and then this is going to happen. So I told that young child that tomorrow when you go to school, you must only ask your teacher one question. That the two children in the back seats, whose stomach they came out from? Then you'll see your teacher will also start puzzling. Because who's the mummy in this game? That young child was so innocent, he looked, he never picked up what I'm trying to say. That you can't get two children with Zaid and Ahmed. But what was the need to teach a child who just entered school, Zaid and Ahmed and two children in the back? To show that homosexuality is 100% normal. That lie, which is the biggest lie, is part of the whole lie. For years and years we knew lies in the western system. But because of that certificate that was coming, all of us ignored the lie. But as that lie becomes worse and worse and worse, a time has to come that before I allow my child to enter the system, I'll have to say to him that I am putting you in a place I don't want to put you. It is just at the moment I don't have my own facility. So I am going to send you to the biggest of liars. As long as the child knows that the one teaching me speaks lot lies. Allah's Nabi taught us this principle. He taught us besides this Quran and besides his word, which reaches us with an authentic sentence so we know it's his word. He taught us do not put your trust in anything after that. So in the time of Sahaba radiallahu anhum, there was something called the Jews. There was something called the Christians. They were known as the people of the book Ahlul Kitab. They knew of Yusuf alayhi salam and the whole story. Yaqub alayhi salam and the whole story. They had what we call today the Bible, the Torah. They knew the details of things that were mentioned in Quran. But they had changed so much. So much they had changed. Today you read a Bible. You ask sometimes a Christian why you became atheist. Sometimes that Christian will tell you, if you read my Bible, you'll also become atheist. In that Bible, they will speak of the Nabi of Allah having relations with his own daughter also. In the Bible of today, just because it's called a Bible doesn't mean everything is okay. Sahaba radiallahu anh then asked Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, they know a lot of the past. But what they meant is in everything there's a lie. But as long as they knew that Allah's Nabi wasallam told them, Haddisu an Bani Israel, wala haraj. That no problem, now you can go and narrate from them. No problem. That no problem meant as long as you understand there is a problem, then there's no problem. As long as you understand there's a problem means whatever they narrate to you, take it with a pinch of salt. Whatever they narrate to you, look at Quran to see does it make sense or not. Be ready to say rubbish, 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 rubbish. This year looks okay. Then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once saw Umar radiallahu anhu with that same Torah. That same Torah which he allowed them to narrate. He saw Umar radiallahu anhu and he was reading it intensely. He was amazed by the knowledge in it. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam face changed. He became upset. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said something that can you not see the anger? Umar radiallahu anhu looked up. He said, I seek the protection of Allah from angering the Nabi of Allah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got very angry. He said, by the qasam of Allah, if Musa alayhi salam had to be here today, he'll also follow me. But what he meant by that, that from the Torah, read it, but don't be amazed with it. Read it with a pinch of salt, because there's so many lies in it at the moment. As soon as you're going to become amazed with this knowledge. There's a book I translated many years ago. The Urdu of it was called Kalapani, Black Waters. Kalapani was a certain island where the British would imprisoned people near Indonesia somewhere. So those people in India who fought against the British, they had a couple of islands to take them far away. One was Blackwaters, Kalapani. 
A great warrior of Islam at that time was Allama Ja'far Tansari, rahimullah. He was a saint of the time and he was in charge of this rebellion against the British. So certain things happened, finally he got caught. Many got caught, he was amongst them, but he was like a big name. So they decided to send him to this island of black water, Skalapani. So he wrote his, what you call it, his autobiography. Very fast we'll go through it and then we'll come to the point. The hardest part was as he was going from India to Indonesia, where he speaks about how they would put them, all, every captive on top of the other one. And then as that ship would move, people would start vomiting, and one would vomit on the other one. And they were not bothered, they enjoyed seeing the people suffer. And for months and months you're living in somebody else's vomit. Now the person wants to urinate, they're not letting him come up, you will urinate in there also. And in that condition, so that was like the hardest, the hardest. He says, but as soon as he reached Kalapani, one of the main like ministers who was in charge of that island, his secretary died. And while he was in that island, they lived like a king's life, the secretaries, British ministers. So the secretary died, and the ship of new captives were coming. So this person said, I need a secretary. Go ask all the captives who knows how to write, meaning write in Urdu, write in Arabic. Because that's what they were sending. So he knew how to write because he was an alim. So he was grot. He said it was Allah's favor as soon as they landed on the island. Suddenly I was a free man. So he brought me in his house. I used to write his letters. Day by day he became closer and closer to me. So now he starts. He says the favors of Allah started opening up to me. Now no one ch- ch- chained me. Now I was the boss. Like I'm his secretary. And the British from India are every now and then sending messages here to this island to know about this person, is he being punished properly? And this minister, he's enjoying the secretary. So he's always giving answers back like very bad, very bad. But he's not doing anything. And he says the time came that he enjoyed life so much that he asked the minister, can I get my wife over also? Because I'm living a free life here. So he wrote to his wife that you don't want to become a prisoner also. Because on this prison we're all free. So his wife in India said that no, I don't want to come. I like my India. While he, that during that time a lot of his children also passed away. While he was on this prison. He said he had ten children. Allah Tabarukta made it because many were captive, many were hit. All ten passed away. All ten over the time he was. But now he started enjoying things. So he told his wife, you come over now. Why are you staying there? She said, no, I don't want to come. So then he said, now I need to get married now. So he decided that the next group of captives who will come, if my wife don't want to come from India, then I'll have to take one from here. It happened one Hindu girl of a very high caste. That high caste, whoever understands the Hindu caste, that they don't let anybody else touch them. We are untouchable. One Hindu young girl and a friend were playing at one well. And that girl fell in the well and her father was very influential. So he accused this girl, you kill my daughter. And everything was showing that no, she never killed. They were best of friends. So while she was sitting in the jail, this girl has a dream. And the dream was so clear. So she tells the man of the jail her dream, Muslim man. So that man says what your dream means Imagine such a simple dream, even the man of the jail interpreted. He said, your dream means that you're going to become a Muslim and a Muslim man is going to marry you. So this girl swore him because she hated Muslims. And then it just happened that she was found guilty and they said, you also must go to Kalapani. Whereas normally no one would go Kalapani. But because of that influential family, she landed up on that boat. And he says, as that boat reached now and they coming out and his eye fell on her. Because he was looking for a wife. When you're looking for a wife, you're allowed to look. But not like how you people look. Means at a very fast glance. So he saw a young girl. So he asked the man who was the British man that find out about this girl, what happened. So that man, he's in charge of the island. He found out. The only thing is she's a Hindu and she hates Muslims. So he sent some Muslim woman to go to ask her like, as soon as that Muslim woman came near her, she said, just stay away from me, you dirt, don't touch me. She was like that. He also had a dream, but it seems. So he sent a message with a Muslim woman, tell her, you can try to run how much you want to, Allah brought you here for me. 
And slowly, slowly in the ending she gave in. She also had dreams. So finally the nikah took place. And then he writes about it like, what a wife he found her. How she became a woman of the Hajjud. How she learned Islam. And how Allah gave him children through her. And Allah gave him ten children. So one one child, he named it after that child that was in Injai that he lost. He said, Allah made me like Ayyub a.s. That whatever he took away from me, he gave me everything back while I was in the present. Ten children he got. He says, finally when the time of his release came, when he went back to India, he went with ten children and another wife. Hardly men like to read books, but when this book was translated, there were so many who bought this book. They were just thrilled about that second wife story. Some even said that if it means to go to get locked up in an island to get number two, I'll go also. Only way to get it. When he was released, he made a Dora of India. He went round. It was called the sign of Allah on earth. That the British government tried so hard to put him in the biggest of punishments. He says, when my Allah wanted ease for me in the prison, I came back with ten children and another wife also. But he says, while he was on that Kala Pani, this was that one part. He said, because he was always in the library. So the time came that he was told, learn English. Because there's a lot of need for you to write letters. So very fast, his mind was unique. Very fast, he learned the language. And then he started reading encyclopedia after encyclopedia. And he wrote that, I found so much of knowledge in the Western world, which had not reached us before this. Knowledge of the skies, knowledge of the sky space, knowledge of the reality of man, knowledge of what's under the earth, knowledge of how grass comes out. We all know a lot of things science has taught us. Google has taught us a lot of things. Anything I need to know, write Google there and Google will give you everything. He says, I became so amazed, so amazed, so amazed with the knowledge in the English books. He says, but I never knew that suddenly I used to read at night seven Jews of Quran in Tahajjud. Seven paras of Quran. He says, I never realized it that I started getting tired and after three paras it was like salam. He says, then a time came where I was reading one para of Quran in Tahajjud and then salam. He said, I still never realized something is not right. Seven paras of Quran in Tahajjud he used to read. He said, then sunnats came out of my life. Then I stopped getting for every salah. I was reading a lot of salah at the house. There was many times I never went for Jamaat, I just read it myself. He said, and then certain times came where a salah became qaza. He said, during that time something happened and I got very sick, so I was taken to that prison hospital. In that hospital they put a drop on me and my body became thin. And I even heard the doctor saying, I don't know if he'll make it or not. He says, in that condition, I began thinking of my life. And he said, my mind went to that a few years ago, the Hajjud time, you were reading seven Jews of Quran. And in the last few months, even furs came out of your life. And then he said, I went into a shiver that if I die now, how will I stand in front of her? So he said, I began thinking that what brought this on me? I must have done something that made Allah so angry with me. He pulled everything away. And thinking, thinking, and then he said it was that after I was blessed with the knowledge of Qur'an, I became amazed with something else besides this. There was nothing wrong with reading that book. The problem was to show that amazement, wow, there is only amazement in this Qur'an. Everything else we take it with that pinch of salt. That you can have 99 truths, but you got a lie in you. As long as I know you are a liar, I don't fall in love with you. I'm not amazed with you. I don't make a sajda to you. You don't become my God. I enjoy it. What I need, I'll take it. Yesterday in the bayan, I gave the example. A boy wants to get married. He understand that girl's father, his mizaj is not too good. He's like a boss. 
And he wants everyone to be like his worker. So someone tells that boy, don't take a chance with that family. That man there, he just thinks he rules the world. So that boy says, I don't want that man, I want his daughter. So I'll just make yes boss, yes boss, yes boss. The day I get his daughter, he'll have to make yes boss to me after that. But until I get the daughter, I can play the game. Your child in university only wants a certificate. So there's no problem entering the university, say yes boss, yes boss, but don't ever think it's your boss. Don't ever think that that professor is your boss. Don't ever make him an idol that I make sajda to his every sentence. Because those boys who have become so thrilled with Western education, when it has started lying so much, still people are not ready to say it's a lie. Whereas today the lie has really opened. Open kufr is being blurted out in those universities. But because the parent is scared, my child won't get the certificate. So we are saying no problem, go for the certificate. But go just like how that boy is going. That as soon as I get the certificate, I'll also speak against it. I won't lose my iman for it. And that's what's happening today. Today people are writing letters to us that they questioning the Quran in the light of science. Whereas the law was, I question science in the light of Quran. Science said there's no sky. My Allah said there is a sky. Oh scientists, either you can't see or you can see but you don't want to see. The whole world can see the sky, only you can't see the sky. My Allah said, look at the sky properly. Look for a crack in the sky, you won't find a crack. My Allah spoke of the sky, you said there's no sky. I'm not going to judge my Quran on you, I'm going to judge you on my Quran. If you're talking rubbish, I will tell you, you're talking rubbish. If Google talks rubbish, I will say rubbish. Everything on Google is not the truth. Everything in school is not the truth. Everything in university is not the truth. Everything the jinn says is not the truth. You landed up by an amil. That amil says to you, isn't on a certain day you had a headache? You say, how you know? The amil just smiles. Soon as he smiles, they suddenly you think the amil knows the knowledge of the heavens and the earth. The amil says, how was Mauritius? You say, how you know? That amil will know because he got a jinn. That jinn got one friend in Mauritius. How so many times your friend knows about something which you don't know about. You go for hajj. In the past when a man would come back from hajj, what would happen? Everyone will go and ask him, how was hajj? Today because of WhatsApp, everyone goes to tell him how was hajj. They tell him, how was this thing here? He said, I don't know it happened. He said, no, it happened. I know more about hajj than you. If me and you can know lot, you think the jinn can't know lot. But just because we know lot doesn't mean we know it all. There are many things the jinn don't know. And there are many things they know, but the nature of the jinn is to lie. Whoever believes the jinn falls in a trap. Whoever believes Western education falls in a trap. Whoever believes anything besides this Quran, anything, amongst anything. In Islam there is something called Quran. Then there is called the word of the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then they are called kitabs, books. The books we learn in madrasa. The books we teach. Especially books on history. Books on history is a compilation of what people said. It is so sad today. We go to certain houses. A man says, come and speak to my children. They became Shia. So I go to that house. Arrangement is made, if it's a girl, if it's a boy, a parda is put up. I ask that child, what made you leave a clean religion for a very dirty religion? Then the child immediately says, I read in this book this one story. What we try to say to the child is, your whole iman was based on one book. You don't even know who wrote that book. You never even met that person. So much of effort was made, 23 years of protection. Jibrail alayhi salam came with it in a manner shayateen were pushed away. It came from the purest. It came through the most honest. Jibrail alayhi salam brought it. 
angels surrounded it. Shayateen were kept away from it. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu took it. 23 years of effort. He would perspire. His body would become heavy. On a cold night, you would see perspiration running. To honor this book, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then would start reading it like how a recorder reads. A sahabi would write it. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not know how to read. But miracle of Quran, he would look at the writing and he would correct. No, you don't write it like this, you write it like that. That writing was corrected. That writing was gathered. Later on for this Quran to be made in one mushaf, one like this. People were told whoever wrote in front of the Nabi of Allah, only that writing will be accepted. People immediately were hafiz of Quran. They could have just that kind of written their own Quran. That itself was not acceptable. Then came the time of the ahadith, the word of Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa If you did say, call a Rasulullah, immediately they would tell you, who else heard this? Nobody else heard this, bring a witness. It wasn't easy. Our honor is that we got something so, so, so authentic. But amazing in today's time, people just read the newspaper and they believe it. They don't even know who wrote it. They see a picture and they believe it. A certain war is taking place. On the news they will put a picture of something that happened 25 years ago. They just have to see the picture. The whole world goes ha ha, cry cry. We have become so gullible for any news. This is the only thing we put our yaqeen, our conviction on. It is the only thing when I read it, I say this is the truthful, the most truthful word. This is my beginning, this is my ending. Everything else... Even a book of history, it could be an Islamic book on history, it described one incident, so that girl will say, didn't you hear that when the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, and then Abu Bakr and Umar became in charge, that girl will say, she never learned anything, she never learned Arabic, who showed her this one funny story? She will say, didn't you know that that man called Umar the butcher, he came into the house of Fatima and he banged the door on her. And she was pregnant at that time and the door banged her. And because it was a solid wooden door, then she had a miscarriage. How can you like the man Umar? And then you'll ask the girl, where did you read the story? She said, I read it in the book. And that's when you say your whole iman, you based it on the book. You don't even know who wrote that book. You don't even know when he wrote that book. You don't even know in that era there was no wooden doors. So what he was going to bang on her. Don't you understand that Ali radiallahu anh married his daughter to Umar radiallahu anh after the demise of Fatima radiallahu anh. All that you forgot. But more than that, oh my daughter, had you understood this year, in this you would have seen the real story of Sahaba, not in that book. Today many people have become Shia just because of stories. Many have become atheists just because of stories. Many wars take place today just because of stories. Many marriages are breaking just because of stories. WhatsApp is the biggest lie because no one knows who sent the first message and everyone forwards it until a time comes where the man says, it came to me from so many sources. It can't be a lie. But when you trace it, you can't find one source also. Everyone just forwarded it, nothing. Allah Taala spoke about this. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were able to accuse Aisha radiallahu anha of adultery. They were so easily able to start a story that when ten people tell you something, you start believing it. You start believing it. But it happened, when it happened, Quran came. Quran said, don't think this was something bad for y'all, it was good for y'all. What was good for y'all meant, it taught this ummah, that don't be very fast to accept anything besides Quran and Sunnah. There are a lot of liars in the world, a lot of liars. Marriages break because you believe everything. They speak in the books of history, that one slave was being sold in the market, at a very cheap rate. But his body looked unique. So one man walked past and he said, what's wrong with the slave? That price. 
So that man said that he got one problem, his tongue is too loose. His tongue is too loose. Normally a woman's tongue is loose. That itself is dangerous. Man's tongue becomes loose. Today I was in that one town, so that man was telling me, they said, let me tell you one story. He said one Molana of the masjid, he needed to go for his dental surgery, false teeth. So because of that false teeth story, the first week now, when they put that new teeth in your body, in your mouth, it's not easy to talk. So that Juma Morana said, I can't talk, so he put up somebody else. So everyone in the coma is feeling sad, hey, Morana is not talking today. The following week, Morana did try to speak, but it was paining a little bit. So he spoke a little bit, spoke a little bit, but he ended. He ended quite early. The third week, things were right. Morana spoke properly. He ended on time, bayan time finished on time, namaz time finished on time, everything was right. The fourth week, Morana started, but he's not stopping. Now when the time came for Salah to start, Morana's bayan is just carrying on. And the people are looking at the watch, but Morana can't stop. Carried on, carried on, carried on. Whatever time he ended the bayan, he gave his salam. He made a long dua. Outside the masjid, everyone was very upset. So they called the mutawalli. They said, what's happening with that Morana? We need to go shops. So the mutawalli said, I also don't know. He just can't stop. But he said, now when this Morana comes out, you all better ask him. I don't want to ask him. So when Morana came out, they asked, what happened today? He says, hey, I also know it was a problem. He says, in the morning, mistakenly, I put my wife's false teeth. I can't shut up now. That woman can just carry on. Can just carry on. But a man carrying on. That WhatsApp today is that man carrying on. Have you seen yourself that we are not stopping with that phone? We are not stopping. After, after, message after message, message after message, I'm replying, he's replying, hundred people are replying. The first introduction I had to WhatsApp when someone opened one account, one person made one dua, hundred people made Amin. That time I never know how to put it on silent, whole night I couldn't sleep. Amin, Amin, ding, 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 you look at the message, Amin, Amin. That man could have said Amin. Who was going to listen to the Amin? Allah, there was no need to tell it to you. Everything must be written. Every thought must be written. That slave was being sold. They say his tongue can't stop. So that man said, that's not problem. I want a slave who's strong. Got nothing to do with the tongue. That slave entered the house. Within a few days, the slave saw what a lovely family. How nice the husband is with the wife. How nice the wife is with the husband. But that slave had a tongue. With the tongue, after a while, the slave was able to get the confidence of the woman of the house. And so nicely just made an indication that, you know, hey, your husband is up to something. When you say less, it means more. Immediately that woman said, what you talk here? But he said, no, I can't talk much. It's not nice to talk much. Finished. Now suddenly, wherever the husband used to go, he was still going the same place. But now the wife was not happy with him. He himself realized something is wrong with her. The slave told him, you picked up something with your wife. She's not acting normal. There's somebody else. He got a shock. Now he's looking at her funny. Now she says, hey, definitely something is wrong. He's looking at me funny. He's looking at her funny because he thinks she's off. She's looking at him because she thinks he's off. One tongue. That woman was so worried about her husband, so worried of the husband. That slave with his wagging tongue. He just said to that woman, there's only one way you're going to get your husband back. There's a certain taweez you need. That Taweez will pull him back, pull him back. Which woman doesn't want a husband? He said, at night when he's sleeping, and you will take this thing and you must put it at a certain place. You will bring what like a scissor, and you will cut it there. That's all. Where that woman understood, that slave tells the man that don't trust your wife. I got certain indication that one of the nights she's going to try and kill you. As that woman is there really to cut the thing at night, suddenly the husband's eye open. He said, I knew you were going to do this. He grabs her hand and they start. She's also screaming, he's screaming, and that same scissor he takes and he pokes her with it. And then they're screaming, people from outside come and they find a man with a scissor in his wife. And then there's a whole case and in the ending most likely she died. And he's trying to explain to the judge what she was trying to do with me and everyone... And then they write in the books of Tariq, and one slave is being sold in the market again. Who wants the slave? They wrote this under one narration. 
When Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that one who takes stories, he is not from us. The tongue, if it plays around, hundred lies, hundred truths, doesn't mean hundred and one is also a truth. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, Sahaba radiallahu anhu said, I go to the fortune teller. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't go. He said, I go to that person who plays with the pebbles and he tells my future. He said, don't go. He said, whoever will go to them has left what I have brought. So a sahabi radiallahu anh said, but sometimes they tell the truth. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that is the jinn. They grab wherever they can grab from. They hear the angels talking, they grab. They hear people talking, they grab. Then they bring it to the shayateen leaders. They bring it to that sangoma, they bring it to that herbalist. And they tell him words and he gives them things that they want. And then when you land up by him, he puts a truth in. He only needs to tell you one truth and you will believe his every lie after that. How many people landed up by an amil? We told them there's no problem going to the amil. But don't believe when the jinn tells you who made the jadu. Because once he reached the amil, that Amil's jinn broke the entire family. Broke everyone in the family. He hates his sister, he hates his brother, he hates everyone. Everyone hates him. The only one who's laughing is the jinn. And sometimes the Amil is also laughing. That one group, one person went to the Amil. The Amil said that they have made heavy jadu on everything that you got when you were married. Everything. Brand new fridge and stove and micro, what you call that, that dishwasher. That man took it all and he gave it to the army. I don't want all this. He emptied his house out. When we heard this, we said, couldn't you come to our house to give that there? That whole story, that house went, because when you got married, your in-laws made jadu on everything. Why they got your daughter married to you? Everything he gave. One person came to the madrasa years ago to Hazrat Muhammad Abdul Hamid Sahib, Dhamad Barakatu. He said he and another person were having a major problem. That man had to pay him out, not paying, not paying, carrying on, carrying on. Finally, that man got upset with him. He said, you want your money, you want your money. He said, I want my money. He said, yeah, take your money. And you will see, you will find no goodness in this money. He gave him a big amount. The thing was all there. The only thing is, this man was now scared that maybe he made jadu on the money. He brought that money to the madrasa. He said, I don't want this money. You want to take the money. Hazrat Muhammad said, I said, I'm very happy to take the money. He said, the madrasa is running for years, no jadu hit. And he might tell the man, and if you get more like this, also bring it back. That Amil is laughing, that jinn is laughing, a whole family is crying. Why? When you are ready to listen to someone who spoke one truth, and then you believe everything to be the truth, we have lost everything. Today on the internet, today on Google, the Google never lies, doesn't mean it can't lie. In the next 10, 15 years, we are going to see robots. Understand this. Be ready for it. That robot is going to be like a woman in your house. She will be the maid of the house. She will be, he'll be the gardener of the house. It will be the cook in the kitchen. That robot will be moving around and vacuuming. Certain countries already got it. But it's going to come very fast. At that time, you won't have to worry if your wife says, no breakfast tomorrow. You say, my robot makes better breakfast than you. In certain temples already, they put the robot. They said, we don't need to hire a person anymore. Because these leaders, they hardly pitch up for the meetings. Because especially these temples, which are far out areas, they said it's easier to pay a million rand for a robot. Because the robot has by hearted the book. Temples, Hindu temples have already employed the robot. When they come for their whatever we are, they call it their Juma. Then the robot is the Imam Sahib, he's reading. They already brought it. Soon the churches will bring. You don't need one man reading the Bible. You got a robot. Who knows whether one day the masjids will bring it also. The masjid will say, Morana, your bayans are not as good as that robot. That robot can be Morana Katani and Morana somebody else at the same time. He hearted all the bayans. So today I'll just go put on this bayan of this Morana. Tum. And the robot will start. Who knows what we're going to see, but they have already started bringing that robot. It might be a joke to you, but the day that robot is asked a question, so many people will feel 
that the robot doesn't lie. Whatever he tells me is the truth. That is why in Google, whenever someone writes looking for the truth, whatever Google says, the man thinks this is the truth. People have lost their iman on Google. People have lost their iman on Google. This is called the lies of Western education. That I need some information from the internet. I need some help from the school. But don't put my iman in the hands of that person. I won't trust the jinn. I won't trust the professor. I won't trust the scientist. Many are liars. Many are liars. There's a lot of liars. If I have put my trust, I will put my trust in this Quran. I will live on this Quran. I will die on this Quran. May Allah tabarakta grant us all this year. This is what is called the lies of Western education. Whoever put his azmat, his honor, his everything in it, Allah tabarakta removed from us the love of Quran. Suddenly tahajjud came out of our lives. Suddenly nafal came out of our lives. We are hardly making it for sunnat and muakada. So many farai is just getting missed out and we wonder what's happening. What is happening is Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said that person who Allah blesses him with Quran and then he puts his eye on anything else besides Quran and he shows amazement at it. He says he has shown the greatest naqadri to the gift I have brought for him. Allah tabarakta bring us all back to the azmat of our Quran and put it in the heart of your child. He must be told it's a lie, it's a joke. He must laugh about the system. He must know everything my teacher says doesn't make sense. Those young boys who went in that manner to school, when the teacher told them about the monkey story, that child could make a joke. The teacher quickly had to change the topic. The child could say monkey business. The child could say, teacher, if you want your father to be donkey, then maybe your father is a donkey, but my was a great man. A young child could laugh at the system. That child will tell the teacher, teacher, if you want me to be hanging upside down on a globe upside down and gravity is holding me upside down, I'm like this upside down, my wife is like this upside down, we're all looking downwards, but we're all upwards. He says, teacher, you can carry on hanging upside down. I'm living a very straight life at the moment. If you want your earth to be moving 60 times the speed of a bullet, and the speed of a bullet in this way, 60 times this way, That young child will say, teacher, it seems that because you're moving so fast, your brains are spinning so fast. Me, I'm relaxing straight at the moment. I'm not going anywhere. That child who was taught Quran, in Quran he would see the sun is moving, the moon is moving. He wouldn't see much about the earth moving. If the earth was spinning so fast, so fast, so fast, Allah would have made at least one indication. That you know what, you're also spinning like mad. No indication, rather Allah Tabarakullah said, we made it so calm for you on the earth. To make it even more calm, we put mountains to peg it down, that you're going nowhere, you're not even moving slightly. That earth which was pegged down, they want us to believe it's spinning, spinning like mad. There's a lot of lies, how many lies we don't know, but a lot of lies. NASA is one of the biggest liars. NASA started when they said we reached the moon. Up till today, nobody believes they reached the moon. But when they started, they showed so many pictures, you can't believe pictures. Don't ever believe pictures. When you see something, it could be your own wife. There's something called photoshops. People today are doing it. They're putting a man's body and somebody else's head. When people look at it, they don't believe. You can't believe a picture. We have become so gullible. Allah Taala bring us back. This is the only truth. This will always be the only truth. Everything else besides this must be taken with a pinch of salt. Allah Pak grant us all understanding. Allah Pak let us live with Iman. Allah let us go with Iman, stand with Iman. Allah protect my Iman, your Iman. Most important, Allah protect the Iman of our children.